So welcome everyone uh, to the College of Liberal Arts Faculty Colloquium, the Spring 2023 series. Uh, my name is Dr. Quentin Maynard. I will be the moderator. Basically just introduce Dr. Dennis here at the beginning. Um, before we go, I'd like to make a few comments. I don't, I don't want to make an assumption, but I don't see any students. But if there are any students here and want to get extra credit, just kind of find me afterwards. Um, and then please just, if you have any questions, hold it to the end so she might answer it in the middle of it. Um, so without further delay, I'd like to introduce Dr. Dennis. Dr. Aaron Dennis is an Associate Professor of Advertising and Public Relations and the Director of the MA in Communications Program in the Communications and Media Department here at USI. Her research focuses on pro-social advertising, critical dimensions of representation in media, and how users engage with media content to impair social relationships and second screening. Most recently, she's published an article about student attitudes towards social justice in the Journal of Education, Citizenship, and Social Justice. She has a chapter in press in a book about diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace, and has two forthcoming chapters about audience reception of recent TV programs, uh, the recent reboot of The Wonder, Wonder Years and HBO's And Just Like. So, without further delay, I will let you take over and tell me about it. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, my presentation today is entitled On the Razor's Edge Exploring Gillette's We Believe Pro Social Advertising Campaign. Um, so, to give you a little background on uh, the Gillette Company, it started in 1901 by Keen C. Gillette. Um, so, essentially, he uh, was seeing that. Um, beards are falling out of fashion at that point in time, and so um, men were shaving, but men either um, had to shave themselves at home or go to a barber to do that, and uh, blades had to be professionally honed by um, a blacksmith or, or some other professional, and so he wanted to change that and uh, give men more control uh, over personal grooming. So Gillette was actually acquired by Procter & Gamble, um, one of the country and the world's largest um, companies that, that uh, takes care of uh, household goods and personal care items. Um, so the grooming industry is a very lucrative industry, so nearing $70 billion in 2020. Um, so most of Gillette's customers are men. So men buy the majority of shaving products. However, this research does not take into account the fact that um, oftentimes it is women purchasing razors and other household goods for the household. So they um, often make a lot of the uh, consumer decisions. So because of some uh, societal changes, so beards were becoming more fashionable again, um, Gillette, and also there was more competition in the marketplace because uh, subscription services were um, starting to be developed like Doc Feller Shave Club, um, Harry's, things like that. So Gillette wanted to uh, refresh their brand image and they did some consumer research and found that um, Gillette was perceived to be a brand uh, for the fathers of millennials, not for the millennials themselves. So um, this, uh, this presentation is about an ad that aired in 2019 at the Super Bowl and it um, launched Gillette's new slogan, which was formerly the best a man can get, and they changed that to the best a man can be. And uh, this advertising campaign was created by the ad agency Gray, and in, um, in addition to that advertising campaign, they also pledged to donate a million dollars a year for three years to nonprofits supporting um, men and boys and positive role models. So let's watch this ad. Um, and also I just wanna point out that it was published in 2019. Um, as of the last time uh, I took a census of the number of views it had, it was at over 37 million. Um, I do also want to point out that Gillette has removed this ad from their YouTube account. So it's still posted um, by other users on YouTube, but Gillette, it's, it's gone. So. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? 
can't hide from it. It's been going on far too long. We can't laugh it off. What I actually think she's trying to say. Making the same old excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. And there will be no going back. Because we, we believe in the best in men. Men need to hold other men accountable. Smile, sweetie. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right way. Not cool, not cool. Some already are. In ways big. And small. But some is not enough. Some don't treat each other, okay? Okay. Because the boys watching today. And I, as I was putting together some materials for my advertising class, um, I went to this website to, because I like to download um, ads so that I can embed them in my PowerPoints just in case they disappear um, at some point. And I s sort of noticed a bunch of comments underneath the ad and they were pretty terrible. So lots of um, comments about the ad and so I started actually becoming interested in this project um, because of the comments I noticed. And so this research project for me um, was less about the content of this ad and more about the consumer reactions uh, to this ad. So I started looking at um, toxic masculinity, which is what this ad is essentially about. Um, interestingly, from an academic standpoint, there's not an agreed upon definition of what toxic masculinity is. Um, so this started gaining traction in the Me Too um, era, the Me Too, with the Me Too movement. Um, so things that are, are agreed upon in terms of toxic masculinity are uh, displays of male um, ag aggression, gender role conformity, um, promotion of misogyny and homophobia. Um, however, some scholars, such as Whaling, um, says that Toxic masculinity is a problematic concept because it creates a dichotomy between healthy masculinity and toxic masculinity, which only allows um, men to operate in a space of some sort of masculinity, but doesn't allow them uh, to operate outside of that. Uh, so scholarship is increasing in recent years um, that talks about toxic masculinity. If you search for toxic mas masculinity overwhelmingly, uh, the results come back as either lay people talking about it or uh, like journalistic pieces. So it's not, it doesn't have that much uh, traction at this point in the, in the literature. Um, so topics that have been looked at, rape culture, uh, reluctance of men to uh, take mental health counseling in prison, um, video games, trash talking in sports, and uh, mass shootings. So. Um, this term is also very political, um, too, from what I uh, read. So, um, it, you know, like within counseling psychology, um, the term uh, is in the literature and represents a deficit perspective towards men, saying that men who exhibit toxic masculine behaviors uh, are incomplete men or lacking in something. Um, so, there's kind of a, uh, a divide between the usage of toxic masculinity. Toxic mas masculinity um, is a term that's been aligned with uh, a liberal agenda. Um, however, it's mostly used by conservative people um, to malign a liberal agenda. So it's sort of a contested uh, term. So another thing I studied for this paper um, is social marketing and uh, social marketing, sometimes called social advertising, sometimes called social corporate responsibility. 
Um, Encompass is basically a, an organization taking a stance on a social issue and promoting that um, maybe either separately from the promotion of a product or brand um, and the product and benefits or in concord with that. Uh, so social uh, marketing often addresses issues that tend to be controversial, so uh, racial or ethnic issues, um, issues pertaining to gender and sexuality, environmentalism. Um, however, the more controversial the issue that they tackle, the greater risk there is for brand harm. Um, so sometimes backlash will make companies rethink their position, uh, retreat from it. Um, sometimes it, it has to do if they feel like is causing brand harm. In other cases, they may not handle an issue particularly well. So for instance, I don't know if you remember Pepsi's ad from a few years ago using Kendall Jenner. Um, that was quite problematic. Uh, so essentially she, uh, there was a commercial for Pepsi and it showed her sort of walking to a protest and passing a, lot, passing a lot of protesters and then handing a police officer with a face shield uh, a Pepsi. So in a uh, Pepsi, um, was maligned for being tone deaf and um, not understanding the uh, situation well or surrounding Black Lives Matter. Um, okay, so another thing uh, that I investigated for this paper is um, trolling behavior. And so I think we've all probably heard the term web troll, right? So people who uh, post uh, hateful messages online. Um, so this has been likened to cyberbullying. Um, one interesting article um, from 2010 um, actually says that they define a troll as the comment, the trolling as the act of posting that, and a troller as the individual who uh, is posting those, the, uh, those comments. Um, another term I came across in this research is J customers, which if you can think about jaywalking, uh, so J customers are customers that cause problems for other uh, consumers, they cause problems for the business, um, so maybe like if somebody goes in and trashes a, a fitting room in a store, they would be a J customer, uh, leaves a mess behind, something like that, or, or yells at an employee. Um, and also, research has shown that when people see um, other posts, like trolling posts, they're more likely to comment themselves. So either joining in or uh, posting to the contrary. So trolling can be harmful for businesses, it can create a hostile online environment, it can cause people to leave the site uh, or unfollow them, it can damage brand image uh, for the organization, uh, it can drown out their uh, intended marketing messages, uh, cause them potentially financial loss, and then be just very stressful for employees trying to manage uh, all of this. Okay, so uh, what I did with this study is um, I used web scraping software to scrape 2011,000 ,000 comments from the YouTube video. So um, this was the official Gillette ad and comments posted on that. I didn't scrape any comments posted from any unofficial postings of the video. Um, so I scraped these in November 2020, uh, which luckily I did because comments, they turned comments off in 2021 because it was not going well. Um, so I imported this into Envivo, which is a qualitative data analysis software. Um, things I observed from the data, most of the comments were made immediately within the first month after this posted, uh, which confirms that we have a short attention span, right? And we move on to the next thing. Um, so the data, most of the comments reference politics in some way, so 39% um, business impact to Gillette, uh, nearly 30% uh, referencing gender, about 23%, and then talking about post hijacking, almost 9%. Um, so these are um, my parent codes, and then I've got some child codes here too. Um, but overwhelmingly, um, a lot of the comments mentioned other brands, such as, you know, um, oh, Gillette is awful, I'm going to, um, you know, start buying Wilkinson Sword, uh, which was referenced, and I'm like, do they still make that? I'm not sure. <laughs> like, but anyway. I'm sure yeah, that's for a while. Right. Uh, or they would say, you know, I'm going to go buy Bic or Schick or whatever. Um, so 
4,600 comments mentioned boycotting um, Gillette. So uh, Procter & Gamble took uh, an $8 million buy down on their stock price uh, within a year of this ad posting and a lot of comments made uh, reference to that saying um, that basically that was what Gillette got for posting something uh, socially conscious. Um, so other criticisms of Gillette, they're overpriced, the ad is a PR stunt. Uh, Procter & Gamble uses child labor, they said. So obviously that's a paper tiger argument that they set up to you know, distract from what was going on. Uh, Procter & Gamble is cruel to animals and tests on animals, uh, which wasn't mentioned often, but uh, a few times. Um, so political comments, uh, by far uh, the most common comment was something about being woke. Um, so talking about propaganda. Um, so a lot of these things I found from doing searches within the data for particular words, uh, snowflake came up a lot. Um, comments that were uh, pro-Biden or pro-Trump uh, that referenced particular ideologies. Um, social justice warrior came up 3,000 times in the data. Uh, social engineering was mentioned. Uh, gender comments. Um, so I saw things like uh, estrogen being mentioned, femsplaining, pink tax, which if you're not aware of what that is, it's charging more for goods for females uh, because they're colored pink or you know have daisies on them or something. Um, mentioned gender studies, radical feminism, tox toxic femininity was also <laughs> brought up quite a few times, interestingly. Um, I'm not sure what that is because there's not even an agreed upon definition of toxic masculinity. Um, so I, I did not hand code all 211,000 messages, um, but I, in coding what I was able to find, like only a handful of supportive messages uh, were posted. Well, sorry, yeah. you all 211,000? Yeah. Like only four messages? Well, okay, like well, so, yeah, and so what, Steve, what I'm saying is that um, I, it's hard, like I can search for the term like pink tax in the data, but it's harder to find the sentiment, which may be like not necessarily just a keyword, right? So like if I search for like or love, like I'm, you know, people may write support of the ad in various ways. So like I would have to go through more carefully hand code. So I'm not saying that there are only four. Um, yeah, and, and so after 2011, I ran through in vivo like around 50 something thousand, like about a quarter of it, because honestly, uh, running through like 58,000 um, posts through in vivo frequently crashed it. So that's too many, do not, <laughs> do not try to do that many. Um, but so like other terms that came up, uh, beta male, beta boys, uh, soy boy, simps, bromies surprisingly came up, which also like refers to men who like My Little Pony. So um, uh, manosphere, mansplaining, testosterone. So um, also the MGTOW incels and menace groups, uh, which intel, incel is uh, short for involuntarily celibate. So there's a, a lot of subculture chatter in this uh, Gillette um, response. So also I found hashtag me neither uh, 1200 times. So in reference to non-binary. Um, so post hijacking, this refers to when people said, Gillette took my post down or Gillette's paying people to put up positive posts. So basically they were saying that um, something um, uh, is afoot on, on YouTube and, and things are happening that shouldn't be. Um, so a lot of references to bots posting. Um, so they were saying that GR, uh, I'm sorry, um, Procter & Gamble um, PR shills were posting, things like that. Um, so these are some sample comments that were under the business impact category. Uh, Procter & Gamble doubles down investing in radical feminism and loses big over $8 billion loss in a mass exodus of customers. Gillette certainly isn't the best razor can get, I'm, so I'm off to find a better brand. And once they came out with this commercial, I stopped buying the product and now I'm not surprised to hear they lost $8 billion in revenue. So I also did not change any of the language of the poster, so anything that was misspelled uh, missing words is, is in the original language of the posters. Uh, so sample comments that have to do with politics. Um, I used to use a Mach 3 and just switched over and never buy Gillette again. I don't want companies promoting 
politics. I just want a razor to shave. Um, voting in a senile old hypocrite will harm the Democrats long term. The Republicans, probably Trump, will be back in the White House in four years' time, just when Gillette will be closing its doors. Um, no person with any normal morals would like this propaganda. Go ahead and be brainwashed sheeple. Um, and people wonder why Donald Trump won. Keep this up, libtards, and you're bound to get him elected a second term. Um, okay, so gender uh, comments, a sample of these. Uh, this video makes me want to grow a fat beard, wear flannel and braces, and set up a barbecue party and teach my five-year-old son how to shoot a shotgun. Um, why would an alpha male want to give his money to a company who promotes male toxicity? Are you a soy boy who wears V-neck t-shirts and carries a male purse? Women want real men, not men who scream louder than a woman when they see a mouse. Um, radical feminism ruins the world and makes men weaklings and women hyper-aggressive. And only idiots with gender studies degrees like this garbage. So, uh, post hijacking, so comments that uh, I coded into this category included things like Gillette paid uh, troll to me, LOL, you've been posting the same thing for two months, spam bots everywhere in comment, I know who are paid by and what their mission, beware. Apparently, being a winner is creating three accounts of troll here, so every, every so often after hiding out of a safe space. And make sure you come back to this video monthly to dislike it again. Gillette is paying YouTube to remove dislikes of the video. Um, so this was one of the handfuls of supportive messages that I found. Um, like I said, these were harder to code for because in some cases they use some of the same language, um, but uh, you had more nuance. Um, so can someone put together a cohesive argument against the new Gillette ad? Guess what? These are the issues of toxic masculinity, not whether or not you vote red or blue, not whether or not you eat meat, have kids, or defend yourself. The issue is a violent, domineering attitude tied to our cultural expectations of masculinity. Often, to be a man in much of Western uh, society means to exploit women, dominate others, and aggressively resolve conflicts through unnecessary violence. That is the issue. That is what Gillette is addressing, and that is how we combat social issues by bringing attention to them. So, much different than, like, different tenor than the other uh, types of comments. So, uh, in summary, the vast majority of the comments left uh, on this video were negative. Um, many of the same people were posting again and again. Like, I saw the same names um, come up. So, posters generally rejected that toxic masculinity existed, but then would immediately reference toxic femininity. So, which I found ironic. Um, and yes, I saw a lot of trolling in these comments. Um, so, in summary, so what should Gillette do? Um, in a 2012 article about best practices for dealing with negative comments, um, there are several strategies that a company can take. The first one, would be delay, so kind of give a little bit of waiting time for cooler heads to prevail and people to calm down, um, see if the situation resolves itself, because sometimes things just sort of, you know, have momentum and then uh, simmer down. Um, if it doesn't, then you can respond, um, and it should be a public response so that consumers can see that you're engaged and active and uh, involving yourself in the message. You also have the chance to influence the conversation at this point. Um, you could also partner with a brand advocate outside of your organization that brings in another voice to uh, help steer the conversation. Um, legal action is possible, but it's not the best course of action. Um, and it's a slow course of action too. So. Uh, it's not advisable unless uh, truly needed. And then censorship is generally suggested to uh, be avoided um, because people complain and will notice um, if things uh, disappear. So what is Procter & Gamble doing now? Well, like I said, they took the ad down. Um, so I did not download this ad, but in 2019 they also aired um, an ad with a father teaching um, a transgender son how to shave for the first time as a teenager. Um, so that ad is also no longer in Procter & Gamble's list of, uh, or Gillette's list of ads. Um, so I've, I don't see any messages 
either on the Gillette website or on Gillette's YouTube channel that have a similar social sentiment. However, Procter & Gamble as a parent company um, has aired some ads that I feel have pro-social messages. So I'm gonna show you two of these. Um, this one's called The Choice and it's from 2020. Let's widen the screen so we can widen our view. Okay, so also, um, I didn't note it earlier, but Procter & Gamble, which is a, a global company, is actually based in the Midwest, so it's actually based in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, okay, so what am I looking towards to do with this data or this project? Um, things I still want to explore are um, how are social media management um, best practices shifting, evolving in light of things like bots and AI content generation, right? Um, so maybe more generally, um, what's going on in cause marketing or social marketing? Um, how are gendered advertising messages different um, comparing brands like maybe Secret and Always compared to Gillette or and things like Nivea Men? and then expand research on the uh, masculinity dimensions and the subcultures. So, all right, this is a selected list of references. So, thank you very much for listening to me. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, yes, uh, Jesse? Okay, so I've heard you mentioned this here before, but you only had a couple of positive Yeah, yeah, and like that's something I would have to more carefully code for. Well, I was
Yeah, so, um, I, yeah, I would love to, like, I don't know that I have access to that software, so I don't know if they have web programs that are available. Yes, yeah, CG Strength is open source. Okay, yeah. They just, they have to run on Windows, so I have to have that boot from that kind of machine. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, excellent. Uh, yeah, you had a question? Oh, They did, like, so, the the, yeah. So I don't know, I don't think that always probably does because I don't think those are um, messages that men attend to. So I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh no, like it, so I mean there there was a lot of popular uh, acclaim for it like in terms of um, like within the advertising industry itself and like there were news articles of uh, like talking about the progressive messaging. Um, so yes, Jessica? Two questions. One, I probably just better with men are know advertising research as well. How did you analyze the data? Right, so if you didn't hand code it. Yeah, so we put it into in vivo and then um, I did searches for key terms. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then um, my other question is, did Procter & Gamble or Gillette ever explain why they took that? Not that I was able to discern. So I'm not sure. I mean, I probably, I could go through their list of uh, press releases, news releases on their website and maybe see if they did, but I, I assume it's something they did quietly, yeah, honestly. Sure. <laughs> yeah, because I think, um, and like, so that's interesting to me too in terms of uh, future research is, you know, like what happens when a company backs off of uh, a pro-social message? Because to me, it, uh, I think it's almost worse to, to backtrack or say, well, like that, that didn't go well, so let's <laughs> let's forget we did that. So. I'm sorry, you had, you had a second question. No, that was. Oh, okay. is Procter Gamble a publicly traded company? I believe so. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, then, then you know, they're, they've got to have some internal complaints about about losing money. Yeah. By, by right. Doing this, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. So I mean, like the. Like I said, this coincided with that, uh, you know, eight million dollar devaluation. Right. Um, so, you know, they explained it. I did see a press release on that. They explained that uh, by saying it was increased competition in the marketplace from competitors and uh, like shifting trends in, in shaping. So, I read the number, you'd be like, uh, those aren't advertisements. Right. It was a it was a goop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So did they carry this new Razor Club? Well, there's a lot of competition. Like, so there are actually like, I mean, there are like Billy is a company for women. Um, like t Target has like other brands that maybe are lesser known. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think like, I feel like there's kind of with that hipster movement, some men are going back to those like safety refillable safety razors, just like, you know, straight razors. So I, I don't know. And I also like, you know, like beer culture is a thing too. So, um, I mean, but I guess ostensibly they get in on the other side of that with beard care products. Um, I do know they did introduce a line of um, uh, King C Gillette, like upscale Gillette products uh, that were more, you know, like curated looking um, to uh, like uh, appeal to a certain demographic. So I, I don't know, I mean, it's hard to unravel all the threads always uh, doing a post-mortem of that, of that type, but. Do you know of any research about differences in, in the level of responses to ads between say liberals and conservatives? Like, like, like do, do conservatives, uh, are, you know. Yeah, are, no. Are I, they more likely to troll, so to speak? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, like, and I, I mean, you'd have, we'd, we'd have to start with being some sort of survey research yeah. and maybe show, I mean, maybe in a sort of an experimental design, but I'm not sure. 
offhand, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know if certain groups are more likely to be to troll or not. Super hyper masculine space. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Do you, would it have been different had it done this on, I don't know, the Academy Awards? Right. You know? Yeah, that's a great yeah, that's a great question. So I'm not sure. Yes. Well, always like a, a real ad, that also appeared on the Super Bowl, right? Like several mm -hmm. years prior to that. So that was a Super Bowl ad as well, which was kind of Yeah, and I mean like I will say that I don't know a lot about sports culture. It's not my thing, like sports ball, I don't know. But um, so I, I do feel like there's sort of a sentiment that generally maybe as long as women's sports don't interfere with men's sports, like that's fine. So I don't know, like maybe maybe the men who protest this Gillette ad don't, you know, like don't mind supporting, you know, sports for their children. I don't, which I mean, in a sense, the always ads do. Yeah, Carolyn, did you raise your hand? Yeah, I raised my hand. Anyway, I was just curious, in your research, if anything came up about the Nike and the Kaepernick backlash, if there was anything mm -hmm. comparable? No, I didn't. I did not search for that term, but I didn't. I don't remember seeing it, and I haven't I haven't actually like looked through the, the data set in a while. Um, so, I mean, it's also, there was so many comments, it was, it was hard to. I'm also trying to remember when that was that 2018 maybe? Would have been after. Was it after? I think this would have been first. Because what, what year was this one? 2019. Was after. Colin Kaepernick. I think Colin Kaepernick was maybe 2018. Fall of 2017. Fall of 2017, okay. Fall of 2017 was Colin Kaepernick, and then it came out. This one was <coughs> Super Bowl, probably. Right? Is that right? 2018? Was Colin? Yeah. Because Kaepernick's was released in 2018. Okay. 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 Like I know Gillette came after. It wasn't actually that far <coughs> because it was September 2018 and then that was January. So That's true. Fall that and then the Super Bowl. Right. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, like, like, they followed their lead and decided. Yeah. To and that, like, that's one of the other things that, I mean, we were, I don't know that we're out of it, but, you know, like, at that point in time in 2019, like, we're in a very contentious space in terms of politics and yeah. which we, you know, are still in. <laughs> Um, so I think people were a little bit more on edge and, and aware than, than usual. So. How was your emotional health doing this? I mean, one of the most depressing things in the it, world is reading the comments. Right, right. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, messaging only a gender studies major could look good life, but um, I don't know. It, yeah, it, it, was, it was probably a drain. So I will say, too, um, I did a lot of perception checking because so this project grew out of a Clapta and a Lara and so I had uh, two student workers working on this with me and I checked in with them frequently and said are you okay with this or like is this is this okay like uh, you know like if this is a lot for you you know like we can recalibrate your responsibilities and they're like no no we really like this and then one of my students <coughs> she kind of got really into like the masculinity the uh, the the simp culture, the incel culture, and she's like, I really want to research that. And I said, Are you sure? Uh, I said, Like, that's a, a dark path to go down. And she said, No, this is really interesting. So, yeah. So I wasn't doing it alone, at least. Soy Boy is a new one. I didn't have seen that. Yet. Yeah. Right, because uh, soy and the production of estrogen are linked. Oh, the is consumption. That okay. of, yeah. So basically, that's yeah. If you're if you're vegetarian or vegan, you are yeah yeah you're less masculine because of the estrogen. I'm just curious, how did you pick the search terms when you were looking through um, Well, so some of it was uh, scrolling through. So when I, uh, when I actually used, I think, a company out of Indonesia, like maybe the Philippines, to scrape the comments for me. Um, and then so they came in an Excel file. And so my student workers and I just kind of scrolled through and like looked at overarching trends. And then we started writing lists. And then uh, we would just chatting, we would like throw out terms, and then <coughs> some of them were fruitful and some of them were not. So, 
we just uh, kind of as a group we, we discussed terms that we thought we might find in, in the comments. most you know uh, these were the yeah, comments the that were recent. yeah the most recent versus the things that people were tacking on months later and I think it would be interesting too to see what was the initial response yeah for right like so how sentiment shifted over time right like and I wonder right yeah. if you do it that right you like <clears throat> first 50 the second 50,000 you know like right did sentiment yeah. shift the longer so I mean I did I did not run all of it I mean I think I was sort of operating on the by 58,000 comments, I should have hit saturation <laughs> kind of uh, yes. assumption. Um, but yeah, I mean, it kind of says that you might have switched it as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and I bet you there was a thing. Uh, yeah, I'll put it on my list. Because you've got plenty of time. Well, <laughs> right, just at this noodles. point, you have the key terms, the software. <coughs> right. I'd start just dumping the rest of it in there. And yeah, see, add what, it to see what comes up from yeah, it. Yeah, existing and it strengthens the yeah. Yeah, well, and I think, because uh, I actually, before this presentation, I pulled up the file, and uh, in vivo issued an update, and now my file is not opening <laughs> in the new updated in vivo, so I think I probably have to start over again anyway, so, you know, hooray for that, but, so, technology. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's okay, I think I have what I need from it, but, like, I've still got my data set, but. Oh well, I think I, I think maybe on a laptop somewhere I have the previous version of Invivo that I could, you know, run things with. So never fear, it'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming and chatting with me about this on a Friday afternoon. I appreciate it. Thank you. And so I'll close out real quick. Uh, thank you so much. I, I learned a lot about racers. And, but <laughs> thank you for that. Not necessarily racers, but um, briefly, I'd just like to quickly announce. Um, the last two presentations for the, the LA Faculty Colloquium. Um, they're all going to be at 3 p.m. on a Friday. I know everyone loves 3 p.m. on Fridays. But hey, I came in just for this, man. That's why I love it. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Uh, the next one is Professor Al Holen on um, March 24th. Her presentation is called The Power of, the Power of Crap, um, a.k.a. Craft is Not a Dirty Word. Um, and then on April 21st, Dr. Stella Ress. She, her presentation is titled, Singing About Tomorrow While Interpreting the Past, Little Girls, Annie, and Pop History. So with that, thank you all for coming. Um, have a great